Well, greetings, Mr. Colazar's class. We're going to start looking at now compounds. And so we're going to be looking at the moles of compounds. We're going to relate the molar mass of a compound. We're going to convert between moles and mass elements in compounds. It's going to be our key part as we're going with our chemical formulas. So to begin with, let's say you had one molecule of a chlorofluorocarbon. Chlorofluorocarbons bad for an environment in the ozone. A chemical formula is CCl2F2. Now if you have one molecule of it, that would mean you would have one carbon atom, you'd have two chlorine atoms, and two fluorine atoms. Remember we don't write ones, but there would be a one right there. So as we're going CCl2F2. Now instead, let's say you have one molecule, or excuse me, let's say you have one mole of sodium carbonate. Now one mole, remember, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. But now instead, if you have one mole of this sodium carbonate, you would have two moles of sodium, one mole of carbon, and three moles of oxygen. So we're going to start using that information to convert between moles and the mass of the compound because a compound is going to be made up of multiple atoms. So our three steps, we're going to look up the molar mass of each element. We're going to multiply each molar mass by the number of moles of that element on the compound and we're going to add the mass of each element together. So our three steps as we're going, let's start out with MgO. So if you were to use our periodic table, you would need to find the mass of magnesium and you would need to find the mass of oxygen. So as we're going, looking at your gold packet is where you're going to find those masses at. And so magnesium, we have 24.31 is its molar mass. 16.00 is the mass for oxygen. Now if we look at the chemical formula, look up the molar mass, step two, multiply each molar mass by the number of moles of that element in the compound. MgO, one magnesium and one oxygen. So multiply each one by one. So we end up with 24.31 and 16.0. So last step, add these masses together. So we end up with 40.31 grams of magnesium oxide per mole. So 40.31 40 grams per mole of magnesium oxide. And that's going to be our important unit as we're going forward is the grams per mole part there. So what we're saying with a 40.31 grams per mole is one mole of magnesium oxide would equal 40.31 grams of magnesium oxide. This will be a conversion factor coming up to help us out. And those conversion factors are going to help us out so we could have one mole of MgO over 40.31 grams of MgO would be one conversion factor or we could have 40.31 grams of MgO over one mole of MgO. So that's going to be something that's going to be useful for us coming up. Our second problem ammonium oxide. So NH4 taken twice and one oxygen, so we have in this formula nitrogen, 14.101 grams. Remember, this is from our PT. Hydrogen, 1.01, .01, and oxygen, 16.0. So from our formula, we have two nitrogens. Multiply that through. eight oxygen or hydrogens and one oxygen. So our second step is going to be to multiply 
we ended up with 28.02 grams of nitrogen, 18.08 grams of hydrogen, and 16 grams of oxygen. This totals 52.10 grams per mole of NH4-2O, or ammonium oxide. So that's how heavy, if you had one mole of ammonium oxide, it would weigh out 52.10 grams. So we're going to be able to use that information now. So our first problem, determine the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide, first step, we need to analyze our problem. Determine the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. So we're given our formula, and we need to find the molar mass. So first off, to solve. Sodium hydroxide, remember sodium is a plus one, hydroxide is a minus, so when you crisscross, you come up with the formula NaOH. So one sodium, one oxygen, one hydrogen, using the periodic table, remember, gets us each of our parts. So when you add the, th um, excuse me, when you multiply one by one by one, you still get the same number. When we add these up, 40.00 grams per mole. Make sure we include the zero zero here. Those are significant. It's unusual. It's kind of like when you go to the store and your total actually is forty dollars. That zero zero does make a difference there. So that's going to be significant figures there, 40.00 grams per mole of sodium hydroxide. Evaluate. Anytime we're looking for molar mass, our units for molar mass is always grams per mole. So we're on the right track there. Now for the second part it says to determine the number of moles of sodium hydroxide in 80 grams. So We've already started out this problem. To determine the number of moles of sodium hydroxide and 80 grams of sodium hydroxide. So we already know that 40 grams per mole for sodium hydroxide. So that's going to help us out in just a moment. So determine the number of moles of sodium hydroxide if we weighed out 80 grams of it. So to solve we're given if we had 80 grams of sodium hydroxide, now we need to use our conversion factor. And in this case, we found that 40 grams equals one mole of sodium hydroxide. We need to set that up so that our units can cancel. So we set that up, one mole of sodium hydroxide is equal to 40 grams of sodium hydroxide. So we set that up so our units can cancel. You can already start to see 80 and 40, we get to 2.0 moles of sodium hydroxide, or zero, 00 moles. Remember, if we have three significant figures to begin with with our measurement, three significant figures is what we're going to end with. So making sure we keep a hold of those significant figures. In this case, not two, but 2.00 moles of sodium hydroxide is how much we would have. Evaluate, making sure our answer makes sense. 2 moles of sodium hydroxide, number of moles is our unit, so we're on the right track there. Our next problem, determine the molar mass of carbon tetrachloride. Carbon tetrachloride, so right away we have carbon. Tetra is going to be 4 chlorides. So as we're going, we need to find the molar mass of carbon tetrachloride, CCl4. So our first step, we have carbon mass from the PT, 12.01 grams, chlorine 35.45 grams. Now we have one carbon and four chlorine, so when we do that math, 12.01 grams, 141.80 grams, our total 153.81 grams. Now the further along we go, the less of this part of the work we need to show. So as you get more you know, successful with doing this part, you don't have to show that part. But making sure for now that we're getting that info down. So this is going to be our useful conversion factor going forward.
and then evaluate. So we start out, we have 153.18 grams equals one mole of carbon tetrachloride. So we're starting out, determine the mass of four moles of carbon tetrachloride. So to solve four moles of carbon tetrachloride, we need to set up our conversion factor correctly to show that one mole on the bottom of sodium hydroxide is going to be able, oh, carbon tetrachloride Ooh. is going to cancel out the or is going to cancel out the moles so 153.81 on top one mole on the bottom moles cancel the moles and we end up with 615.24 grams of carbon tetrachloride now this is what the calculator came out with now notice we have one two three sig figs measurement to begin with one, two, three sig figs to end with. So 615 grams of carbon tetrachloride would be equal to four moles. Units in mass, grams are in mass, so we're on the right track there. And then we've got one more problem to try out. How many moles are in 300 grams of sulfuric acid? Now this problem takes out that middle step that we've been doing and it just puts it all together. So in this problem, we can't go directly from grams to moles. We need to stop along the way. So we need to get that molar mass of sulfuric acid. Sulfuric, ending in ic, so we need to find out sulfuric acid's formula is H2SO4. Sulfuric turned to sulfate. So SO4 has a minus two charge. Hydrogen is what all our acids start with. So when we crisscross is where we get our H2SO4. So how many moles of that we have? Our first step is we need to find that molar mass. So how heavy is sulfuric acid? So our first step, hydrogen, sulfur, oxygen, Remember all of that info from our periodic table. We have two hydrogens, one sulfur, four oxygens. So when we multiply those out, and then our next step is to add them together, sulfuric acid's mass, 98.09 grams per mole. If we have one mole of sulfuric acid, it equals 98.09 grams. So we need to use that information coming up. So our next step is, we had 300 grams to begin with. So our starting point, 300 grams, and we want to get it to moles. We now know our conversion factor, 98.09 grams per one mole, needs to be set up so that our grams unit can cancel the grams unit. Grams cancel grams, leaving us with moles of sulfuric acid. So when we go through to multiply, think about this as a kind of a fraction again. Numbers on top are multiplied first, and then we divide by the numbers on bottom. So 300 times 1 divided by that 98.09. We turn out to be about 3.06 moles of H2SO4 or sulfuric acid. So in the end, what we've done is went from our molecular mass, our molar mass, to moles to grams, or from grams to moles in our conversions here. We'll stop here and then we're going to put the two parts together from this last section, 10.3 and 10.2.